Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. This, this morning I'd like to capture my thoughts with nepotism at its best. First Samuel chapter 13 verse 22, a powerful story over there. Now I, I'm reading about the story of Saul, you know, a uh, good man, he had come into the kingdom. And then the Bible says in the earlier verses, it says, in the whole of Israel there was no sword. And there was no spear. But then the, uh, chapter 13 verse 22 said, the only place where you can find a sword was in the house of Saul. So Saul the king and his sons had swords, but the rest of Israel didn't have swords. Oh, how? How can an army work without the tools or the ammunition or the armament they need to fight? And the only people who have it is the king and his children. I mean, this is very, very interesting. How do you even expect them to defend you when a war comes? No wonder, you know, even for, no wonder David comes to, to, to help Saul fight Goliath and, and then uh, Saul says, take my sword. And he said, I have not tried it. I have not used it before. I have not tried it. In First Samuel chapter 17, David said, I have not tried it. Because one way or the other, the king had succeeded in equipping his countrymen and his people and his family and his sons and his daughters and left everybody to their own devices. So in, in Israel, in a time of war, where is going to be the sword? No wonder when Jonathan met David, Jonathan gave David a sword. Jonathan gave David a sword. Because one way or the other, the king had not risen up to his responsibility of equipping the people. Isn't this what goes on? This is what we see. Don't we see nepotism at its best? Family members, they are equipped. Others are not equipped to meet the challenges of life. Only the king and his sons. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. Nepotism at its best. Why, why is it that leadership, sometimes leaders, yeah, we're so fixated with mine and mine and mine and mine alone. Whereas the ordinary people are languishing and they are suffering and they are, and they are going through all those other things that they shouldn't be going through. When it is in our means and it's in our power to equip them, when it is in our power to, to aid them also rise up, to educate them, to make them rise up, why is this so? Oh, human beings, when are we ever going to learn? You are King Saul and you need to equip the people for your own defense and the defense of your legacy tomorrow. But guess what? Only mine and my sons, my sons and I, my daughters and I. Nepotism is the bane of sometimes African leadership. Nepotism is the bane. It is something that plunges a nation into unnecessary civil wars and all those things because people see it. People see it. Because the Bible wrote it that only the king and his sons had swords. People noticed it. And therefore, at a crucial time when Saul was giving David a sword, he said, I have not tried it. I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to use it. Nepotism at its best. It's a choice. Once we come into places of responsibility and places of authority and places where we are lifted up above ordinary men, we have a servant responsibility. We have a God-given servant, uh, um, servant posture to serve the people and to equip them and let them also rise up and fulfill their potential. That's what we can do. We can, we can equip them with, with information. We can equip them with, with, with the necessary resources. We can equip them by even changing their mindset. We can equip them, rise up and also become giants like us. Anyway, nepotism at its best sometimes is a reality we have to face. Choices are ours. See you later.